Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, let's take a moment to pray, and then we will get our class started. Uh, may I ask uh, maybe Kieran, can you pray with the class so we can start? Um, okay, Daryl, why don't you pray? Sure, Master. Thank you. Master, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day of our Lord. Thank you for your hands of protection upon us over the week, Lord Jesus. As we uh, um, start our today's class of Father, I submit, Pastor, I submit others who join our Father, Lord Jesus. Uh, you just lead us and guide us, of our God. Give us wisdom and knowledge and all the things that we uh, study, O Lord Jesus. We submit the entire class into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. 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 All right. So, welcome, everyone. Thanks for connecting. Oops. So, uh, today uh, will be our last class, uh, last lecture uh, in this course. Um, last week, uh, not uh, last week, we talked about uh, project planning ex execution. Uh, last hour, uh, that's on Wednesday, I just uh, kind of ran through some of the software uh, products that we uh, can use in uh, for the administration or the operation of a, of our church or Christian ministry. Uh, so we just went through that. And uh, today, I just want to make some comments uh, with respect to uh, strategic innovation and also some thoughts and comments on uh, continuity, establishing continuity. And after that, we'll just quickly review the whole course and uh, we'll be done for today. And uh, so we will, there will be no more lectures from next week. Uh, or, but instead what I will do is uh, I will create three assessments, put it out in Google Classroom and on the e-learning portal for those who are using the e-learning portal. And this, this is just to review the materials. You just, during the month of November, you take time to just um, finish those, uh, do those assessments. So there won't be any lectures in November, but it's just a time for us to do the assessments that I put out, okay? So what I want to do now is I just want to talk about two things. One is on strategic innovation. So uh, maybe I should just uh, let me uh, uh, put this in the, in the chat and uh, share that with us so you know what I'm talking about on uh, pursuing uh, strategic innovation, pursuing excellence and strategic innovation. And then I also want to talk about um, establishing continuity of passing the baton. So in any, and I'm just talking, you know, both these areas are big areas of <laughs> when, when, when you study in, in, in business or uh, management school, uh, strategic innovation is a big area. And um, establishing continuity stuff is, you know, there are books written on all of these things. But I just want to present those thoughts to us so that we can keep that in our mind uh, as we, look at the administration of any organization. So in the administration of any the Christian of the church or the Christian ministry, uh, there has to be this ongoing pursuit of excellence and innovation. So excellence means whatever we do, we want to do it really well. Uh, there's got to be a, this, this, this uh, 
it's not just perfection for the sake of perfection, but it is doing a job very well. It's doing something very well, whatever we do, right? Whether we are uh, in the Christian church, of course, it's in the context of preaching the word, ministering the word, mm. whether we host conferences, seminars, workshops, uh, or everything that we do in the ministry from a Christian church perspective or a Christian ministry perspective. We want to do it well. Now, obviously, you know, this excellence is not going to be something we achieve right off. You know, it's something we work towards. Uh, but there's got to be the pursuit of that. Right? That means, look, we are constantly looking at uh, areas for improvement. So the moment you see something, uh, you look at the good, but you also look at, look, you know, here are so many things we can do to improve this. And we're not looking at it in a negative way, but we're looking at it uh, with a positive intent. That means here are the areas where we are falling short uh, and uh, which we can work on uh, to make improvements, right? Because we're never going to start out perfect. Uh, we're going to start out, you know, at the level we, where we are at, uh, doing what we can, uh, and we understand there are constraints. There may be constraints of people. There may be constraints of the rightly skilled people. There may be constraints of finances. There may be constraints of time. So we just start out with what we have. But the goal should be, uh, uh, with whatever we have, let's do the best. Uh, let's do it with excellence, you know. And then as the ministry grows, you know, we may be able to get more skilled people. We may be able to invest more money into that area. And so we can then you know, take it up further. But the mindset we should all have in, in doing what we do, the church or the Christian ministry, is let's pursue excellence. Let's do it the best we can at the level we are at. And then slowly, you know, we're going to keep getting better. Uh, we'll be able to add more aspects to the work we do. Right. So pursue excellence intentionally, you know, and look for areas where uh, you can improve. You know, for example, I'm just giving you an example. You know, uh, right from the beginning, early days, you know, in those days we had, uh, we didn't have uh, LCD projectors and laptops, but we had, um, you know, what we used to call as um, overhead projectors. And we had these uh, clear plastic sheets, vinyl sheets, that on which you know we would have uh, the lyrics of the song written. So you place it on that overhead projector. I mean, on the projector, and it'll project the lyrics on the screen or the wall. So that's how you know during worship time, there should be somebody sitting, and they'll be manually moving the vinyl sheets, uh, the clear sheets, and project the lyrics on it. So that's how we used to do it in those days. But the point was a simple thing, like make sure that the lyrics are without any spelling mistakes. Make sure that lyrics are right, you know, whatever is printed on the vinyl sheet, which is projected. Make sure that when it's projected, they're big enough for the audience to see from, you know, however far they were. These are small things, but these are things we should look at. It's not enough to say, look, I have a projector, I'm projecting something on the screen. Uh, are the words right? Are there spelling mistakes? Um, is it big enough for people to to see and worship? You know. Uh, so right from those days, you know, we should remind people, hey, let's get that right. You know, and then of course, you know, at the time we moved to these uh, laptops and you know, these uh, LED projectors, but then the same point, make sure, you know, what is projected is right. There's no spelling mistake. Make sure it's big enough for people to see from a distance kind of thing, you know, uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing pursuit of excellence. And that's the mind. I'm just giving one example, but that's how we should view everything we are doing. All the areas of ministry, look at it. Like, are we doing a good job? Are we doing it well? Uh, what are the areas we can improve? Even small things, you know. Uh, and I'm 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 saying spellings because uh, sometimes bad spelling, wrong spellings, it leaves a very bad impression on people. Uh, spelling mistakes, typos, those kinds of things, you know. So you have to keep looking out for all those details. And basically, our goal is, whatever we do, we want to do it well, the best we can, 
for our Lord. Right? Ultimately, it's, we're doing it for Jesus. So pursue excellence. The second thing that uh, we must pursue as a church ministry or as a Christian ministry in the work we do is strategic innovation. Now we say strategic means it's got to be relevant for the times in which we live. And it's got to be something that's going to make a difference in the lives of people. You know, wake means you're doing something new. You're doing something that has not been done before. Right? Uh, so you're, 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 you're strategically innovating. Strategically, you're doing something new. So you're not doing new something new for the sake of doing something new or something different. But you're being very strategic. That means you've thought through it and you know that it's going to make a difference in this area. Right? So that's another thing we have to think about. Strategic innovation. Can we innovate? Can we do something different, something new that is very strategic, that's really going to make a difference, maybe in an area that uh, nobody else is doing something, uh, nobody else is you know, maybe attempted to do something. From, from, I'm talking about the church or the Christian ministry. Right? So we need to keep thinking along those lines. Strategic innovation. How can I do something new that will make a difference? And uh, this is something we have to you know, motivate our team members to do. For example, just this morning, I sent an email to our uh, to some of our pastors um, who are working with children and teens, that age group. And I sent them a list of uh, links. Uh, and this is research that is put out by the United Nations um, and other global bodies that are looking at how children, teenagers, how their world is changing. And so they, they actually do surveys every, I think every four years, they run surveys on teens and youth. Um, uh, say, you know, saying like, this is what their world is like and this is what they're doing. So um, I sent the links to them saying, hey, go through this, do a survey, understand what's happening and how can we change what we are doing for children and for the youth, for the teens and the youth, given that the world in which they are living is changing. So some of the content that we've developed was done you know, over five years ago, some even close to 10 years ago. Now, the truth doesn't change. The, the word of God doesn't change. But how we deliver it to people, uh, to our intended audience, is changing. The world is changing. So we need to innovate. We need to, you know, uh, uh, think of different ways in which we minister to uh, those age groups, those categories, right? So a strategic innovation, thinking creatively and uh, uh, thinking of ways by which we can connect to people or doing things that will make a difference uh, in their lives. We think like that. So I want to encourage you, innovate strategically, do something new, but with a well thought out you know, plan and knowing how it's going to make a difference. So that's strategic innovation. The last one is on establishing continuity. That means in any organization, especially when talking about a church or a Christian ministry, it is very likely that uh, we want this to continue. Right? I, um, it's very rare that you start an organization and say, okay, this organization is intended to live only for four years. I mean, there are some things that may happen like that, but usually a church or a Christian organization, the, the intent is for the work to continue for succeeding generations to come. You don't start a church and say, okay, this church will exist only when I'm here and I'm gone, the church goes. No, we don't do that usually. Uh, we don't start a Christian ministry and say, okay, this ministry will happen only while I'm here. When I'm gone, everything goes. No. Uh, we, uh, uh, the intent is this work must continue even after I am gone. Now, 
that meant we had to start thinking in terms of how do we establish continuity? How do you pass the baton so that uh, other people can continue the work, whether it's a church or any Christian ministry that's set up, how can they continue the work even after the you know, current leaders leave? Very important is to raise up the younger generation, raise up the next set of leaders. You know, and sometimes I see pastors, I see churches, uh, and uh, the pastor now is elderly, he's, you know, well into his um, later years, but there's nobody to continue. And we are wondering, like, okay, you know, what happened all these years? Uh, some where 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 is the next generation of leadership and the, the the organization that can continue the work? And sadly, in many cases, uh, you don't find that. Uh, in the church, in, in, in that war, oh, things that I've observed or uh, in the Christian ministry. And so what happens, uh, it just dies out, you know, because there's no, there was, there was not a plan to continue the work. So in whatever ministry we do, you know, whether it's a church or some other Christian ministry, try and think along those lines that, uh, hey, I need to intentionally raise up leaders, train them, so that they will start from where we left. And they will take it forward, uh, you know, and their generation may have different challenges and different opportunities, but they should know how to move, how to navigate, and to go into those new opportunities and overcome those new challenges which they may face in their generation, in, you know, in the years to come. But then we can groom them, we can train them, we can pass on our learning to them so that uh, they can take things forward. So what I want to say is we need to be intentional about it, uh, start thinking about it, uh, bring in intentionally younger people, uh, start passing on knowledge, learning, guidance, information, as much as we can, transfer it so that when it's time for you know the older the one one level or one generation step out and new leaders to take over, they, they will be able to do it. They should be able to do a better work than what was done. It's like if you can, if you want to imagine it, the ceiling, our ceiling, should be their starting point. Okay. So they start from where we left. If we are able to hand things off in a proper way, they can build further and take things forward, okay? Now, in the next few minutes, uh, I will just do a quick review of uh, what we have uh, covered in this course so far, uh, just, just to refresh our minds, and then we will dismiss, All right? So in this um, course on church and ministry administration, now I, I put out these notes in, in bits and pieces, and uh, so, we, you know, we wanted to, uh, let me look at the table of contents here. So this is what, you know, we went through. We wanted to understand uh, administration and everything that goes into the administration of a church or a Christian ministry. So the idea was to give us a good overview of here are all the different aspects you need to think about uh, in the context of a church. Uh, a church administration or ministry administration, right? So we talked about the importance of uh, good administration from a biblical perspective, why uh, this is important. Uh, we also looked at the prop, you know, the practical side, you know, why, why we need to have good administration and how do you overcome some of the excuses people make, I'm talking about in the Christian context, uh, to excuse themselves for poor organization. And then, we looked at what are the objectives of good administration, right? What are we trying to achieve? Uh, you know, we, we said that yeah, there is, a, there is a, we, of course, in, an, in the introduction part, we talked about the difference between leadership, management, and administration, and we need all three uh, for, for the organizations to do well, right? So we want to, in good administration, 
while we develop people and establish systems and fine tune processes, allocate resources, we want to ensure there's alignment, there's efficiency, there's productivity. So that the goal and the overall vision of the church or our organization can be achieved. So yeah, we're looking at alignment, efficiency, and productivity. And then we said, okay, in, 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 in what goes into this, this, this need for people skills, this need for organizational skills, and there's also need for execution skills of how you execute things for good organization. So then we started with the very basics. The very basic is you have to first form a trust or a governance. That is, you have to uh, legally set up this organization. And uh, we, we gave some guidance on church governance. Uh, how, how do you form a legal entity? You register a trust uh, or a religious organization. And, uh, uh, you know, we... How do you select members for your trusts, the articles, uh, and setting up an advisory board? Uh, we gave some examples and we how we have done it here at APC. Next, you need to have, think of an organizational structure. How, how is this going to look like? Uh, what is the uh, different uh, areas that you are going to address in the organizational structure? And uh, we talked about, you know, what are the Test up a good organizational design, uh, avoid uh, 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 steps that are of no value. And um, here's what we shared about our organizational structure at APC, where, you know, where we, this is how we set up the organizational structure of the church. And uh, some of these things we are filling and growing. Uh, these positions. So each one of these roles here are further divided uh, into uh, additional roles. Um, and this, this is how various departments are set up. Just shared some of that, right? And uh, we talked about a model where uh, that, that can have volunteers in, involved. We refer to the hub and spoke model. So with pastors and ministry leaders uh, and uh, church staff, and volunteers. You create these teams, people are involved, uh, you can assemble and dismantle these teams as required. So once you have a structure, we need to think about the policies, guidelines, and standards so that everything runs well. And we talked about several of these policies that you need to have in place, operational guidelines, and the standards you need to put in place. And we gave you a link where you can download what APC is using and you can use it. We talked about operations, which is uh, you know setting up systems and processes within each ministry area. There will be several systems and processes, how these interact, but all of them working together will make the organization function very well. So we talked about you know various things, for example, the accounting department, all the things that need to be done there. You have systems and processes for various tasks and pieces of work that need to be accomplished. The human body is a good example of that. And we talked about good system design. How can you do it better, faster, cheaper, and differently? Uh, so you, you'll be asked those questions to keep improving uh, our system design. And here's a process design. One example for distribution of books, we covered that. And you need to have a process, a very clear cut process. so People understand this is how it happens. They should be clear about the process. Then people will do their work very efficiently. Right? So we gave some examples. Let me talk about you know, church staff management or people management or human resource management. How do we take care of people? Uh, we, have, we have staff, we have consultants, we have lots of volunteers. Uh, and I've talked about the hiring process. Um, uh, we need to do a good job in the interview process when you're hiring people and uh, some of the things that you need to do when you're bringing people on board. Uh, we just outlined that. Uh, how do you determine people's salaries? Uh, what are some of the things to keep in mind? What are the benefits uh, that they have? And then managing employees. Uh, you need to keep them motivated different ways you can keep them motivated, reduce demotivators, 
and then several ways we can you know take care of employees by having these surveys and so on when sam we've given samples for those things and then we additionally have to develop our employees make sure that getting better uh, we're giving input to help them uh, grow and develop and there are other things that we do like uh, performance appraisals addressing difficult situations and and so on and we considered some questions along those lines then we talked about managing volunteers so because uh, most churches and christian organizations also have volunteers involved we need to think in terms of volunteers um, uh, how we can engage with volunteers but understand the limitations how volunteer teams are established and we talked about all the different volunteer teams at apc that that we people are serving in all of these teams um, we revisited the hub and spoke model and we also said very important is you know you recruit the volunteers uh, letting them know how to sign on uh, try to have you know a, a good demographics a good mix of volunteers uh, orient them well and train them well and also it's very important about uh, you know uh, making them engaged being part of what we're doing and making sure they have good relationships with the church staff or the ministry staff all of these things that go into uh, volunteer management and uh, you know nowadays we can even do remote volunteering people can work for us from different parts of the world then we talked about communications within the organization how we, uh, we need to have good communications within the organization we talked about organizational culture, how uh, that really affects the, the experience of people within the organization. We shared with you some of the core values that we have here at APC and how that defines our culture. We contrasted healthy culture, culture and toxic culture uh, and avoid some of these problems uh, that, that uh, really disrupt culture. Then, yeah, just evaluate, assess what's happening within the culture. So this is in a questionnaire again. Then we talked about finance, accounting, budgeting. We went through, you know, how you manage the money that comes into your organization. That's a very important aspect uh, of money. And we talked about the department and various policies, procedures. Uh, we shared how we do budgeting, auditing, what reports we have, and so on. The legal matters, finally, uh, you know, make sure that you get the help of proper people to take care of legal matters. Uh, we also talked about projects, uh, planning, execution, coordination, understand the project life cycle, uh, how you initiate the work, plan the work, execute the work, monitor the work, and wrap things up. So we covered those. And then leveraging technology, which is what we did earlier this week. Uh, we have a uh, different software that you can use to leverage technology. And the last two points that I just mentioned was on strategic innovation and establishing continuity. All right. So I hope that, uh, you know, this course has uh, kind of just given you an overview of, uh, you know, what really goes into uh, the organizational side of a church or a Christian ministry. Now, many people don't think on, in those terms. We think like, okay, church means I just preach and I just, uh, you know, pray for people. Well, that is, and it, that's part of what we do. But there's a lot of things that happen in the background, which is really needed to for effective ministry to serve people well. And so, having a very strong, well-run organization is important to do good ministry right any questions any thoughts before we close today all right so hmm, not easy to lead a church hmm, that's true Karen <laughs> uh, there's a lot that goes into the church but thank God uh, we don't have to do it alone. Um, you know, if we can have good people, uh, build good teams, then together we can do it. Yeah, we can make it happen. But it's not easy. Like uh, 
like you said. All right. All right. So I'm going to ask uh, somebody to close in prayer, and then we will dismiss and just look out for the assessments. Hopefully, I'll be able to work on it next week, and uh, then we will, you know, use just take the month of November to do the assessments. And uh, with that, the course will be over. There will be no more lectures, so this there, there will be no need to connect to the classroom, uh, but just do the do the assessments. All right? Okay. So, uh, who'd like to do the closing prayer? Anybody? Okay. Maybe Siddharth, is your, is your phone okay? You could pray for us and close out. Then I will pray. Okay, Kiran, please pray. Thanking you, Father God, for the day. And thanking you, Father God, the subject, Father God. There is so much, Father God, we learn the subject, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, for all the knowledge and wisdom, Father God. Father God, uh, give your wisdom and knowledge more, Father God, that, that we can apply to your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, there, uh, the, the church and the your work, Father God, that is not easy, Father God. Father God, help us to move forward, Father God. Uh, help us to take a step, Father God. Help to every side, Father God, to to leading to to move to your kingdom work, Father God. Bless to everyone, Father God. Give more passion and desire to your work, Father God. Help every side, Father God. And Father God, give more uh, revelation, Father God. And Father God, help every side, Father God, how to maintain the uh, the church, every side, the volunteer and uh, the pastoring and faculty every side father god help us to uh, understand and maintain the upcoming day father god and we when we will uh, start our own own uh, churches and the work your kingdom work father god help us to nicely we can we can do father god to your kingdom work father god the all places father god father god uh, lead lead upcoming time father god submitting to your hand the whole week and the weekend and uh, the the day, Father God. Thanking you for every sight, every moment. Thanking you, Father God. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take some time to think on these things. Work, do well. God bless you all. Thank you for being part of the course. And, uh, God bless you. Thank you, sir.